too. My name's Eric, and I am your host. Bless you. Yeah, that's good. That's good. And Rose, you have nothing in front of you. I'm making my martini. Oh, that's cool. You're drinking a martini. Oh, that's good. Good for you. When it comes out, everybody will, ch will cheer you. That's good. Anybody else celebrating anything? No. Any anniversaries? No, of course not. How about first dates? Last dates? Could be. Right there. There you go. She's like, I'm going to fucking kill you. Shut the hell up, number one. And number two, really? Last date? You're not getting laid tonight. Good for you, man. All right. That's awesome. I'll share a little bit of information about myself with you. Uh, again, I told you my name's Eric. I'm a retired police officer. Thank you. A couple of people clapped the rest of you like, fuck you, you're retired, we don't care. I did, I did 31 years in law enforcement. Yeah, thanks. So you can imagine all that time I've heard every excuse in the book, like, officer, I'm speeding because I'm almost out of gas. Get that. Also, I need to get home because I just got my period. <laughs> Ladies, first of all, TMI. Second of all, that was from an 82-year-old woman. <laughs> Ma'am, I don't think that's your period. I checked to see if that's your lung coming out of you. No, no. Hole. <laughs> my favorite is when you would walk up to the car and they'd have their shirt undone. They're twirling their hair. They're batting their eyes. They're puckering their lips. They look up at you and they say in their most sexy, sultry voice, Officer. <laughs> Is there anything I can do to get out of this ticket? <laughs> I just look down and I say, sir? <laughs> For God's sakes, pull up your pants. I am not a priest. <laughs> Behave yourselves. Behave yourselves, it's true. Sometimes we'd have to go to accidents where a deer was hit by a car. No, I know, it's tragic. It's even worse, because if they were still alive, we'd have to shoot them. That's true. Sometimes I always wondered what was going through the deer's mind as we pulled up. Oh, thank God, the police are here. Ow, ow. Officer, over here. Ow. You know, I was walking across the street, and what the fuck is that in your hands? You're not here to help at all. Bet you wouldn't shoot me if I was a white-tailed deer. <laughs> Racial jokes just went Bing. It's okay. I talked to my black friend. He said, it's okay. It's okay to tell that joke. It's... I don't know. I'm working it. I know you guys paid a lot of money for comedy. You have to wait just a little bit longer. It's going to be coming, I promise. I promise you. Uh, you know, going to calls where I'm killing deer, being exposed to germs, you think I'd be a germaphobe, but I'm not. I am a hypochondriac. It's true. And that's to find somebody who believes they have something they don't really want. Coincidentally, my wife has the same thing. She, she calls it her husband. I do. I have it bad. I have it so bad that I let other people convince me that I have things wrong with me. Like, I went to give blood not too long ago, and it used to be when you gave blood, they drew the blood, they gave you a cookie, smacked you in the ass, and out the door you went. But now you got to fill out a questionnaire. You guys going back since you had to fill out this questionnaire? It's like they're asking you for your whole life story. And I didn't think I had anything wrong with me. I was like, I can fill that out. I can give blood. So I filled it out, and the lady reviewed it. She goes, oh, no, 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 no. You can't give blood. Seems you were stationed in Europe back in the 80s, and you may have been exposed to mad cow disease. What? That's the wrong thing to say to somebody who's a hypochondriac. Because I don't even know what the symptoms are, but now I think I have it. I said, well, how do I know if I have this? She goes, you don't. There's no test. You just get it. I said, you mean to tell me that I'm going to be driving down the road one day, and somebody's going to cut me off? I'm going to go, fuck me! <laughs> That's utterly ridiculous. <laughs> Such a stupid joke. <laughs> but I'll milk it. <laughs> That's no bullshit. <laughs> uh, these are the puns, people. These are the puns. It's true. I convinced myself I have crazy things. I convinced myself I had Tourette syndrome. I did. I was walking around my house going, shit! Fuck! Son of a bitch! Turns out I just have kids. <laughs> Round of applause from the parents in the house tonight. There you go. That is a hell of a price to pay for getting laid, isn't it? Jeez, man. That is tough raising kids. I know, I get it, because I'm raising them. Like, I know you all saw on the news not too long ago the girl who was, uh, who was suing her parents for not paying for her college or her living expenses. Right? Isn't that crazy? I couldn't even get my parents to pay attention to me. It's crazy. 
it's crazy. And I know, it's tough. You know, and apparently it's really tough for kids nowadays because on the same, on the same newscast, they were talking about uh, a, a new spa for babies to relieve the stress of being a baby. <laughs> what stress is there in being a baby? You shit your pants, people think it's cute. You get to suck a titty in public. <laughs> Try doing that now, that's stress. It's not happening now, it's not happening. And it's true, like I, I love my kids, they're older now, they're just, they, and they all have jobs, and they don't, they don't care about me, but you know, this past Father's Day, they finally pulled their money together and they bought a gift for me. It's the first time they ever bought me anything, and I was excited about it. They said, Dad, your gift is out in the garage. I was like, oh wow, that's great. They go, go ahead, Dad, check it out. So I ran out to the garage to see what it was. It was this big box with this big bow. They said, go ahead, Dad, tear it open. So I ripped it open, it was empty. I go, what is that? They go, we bought your retirement home. <laughs> So right, next day I got him back and pulled up in a Corvette. I said, kids, come check this out. They said, what's that? I said, it's your college fund. <laughs> Assholes. Yeah. It's crazy. It's tough. Like, you know, I miss it. I miss the days when they were young, right? Well, my wife and I bought our house. We didn't have the kid yet. And I was really excited about buying the house because there was a pool in the backyard. And I was like, oh my God, it's going to be awesome. Right? I'm going to have these bikini clad women over. going to have these orgies. <laughs> No, because then I had kids, right? And that, my pool just turned out to be a reason to lie to them. Because we know as parents, we have to lie to our kids, right? We have to tell them things like, this is going to hurt me more than it's going to hurt you. <laughs> if you tell me the truth, you won't get any trouble. That's my favorite. That's my favorite. And so my pool just turned out to be another reason to lie to them, because I don't want them to fall in the pool. So I came up with this elaborate lie about this invisible shark that lives in the pool. And the only way it gets in or out is if I push an invisible button. They bought it. They're so stupid. <laughs> they believe in crazy made-up things like Santa Claus, the Easter Bunny, Universal Health Care. <laughs> so when you have three kids that believe in invisible sharks and they're swimming in the pool, this is the reason why my kids are the assholes that they are today. As they're swimming in the pool and they're going, Daddy, Daddy, look at me! Daddy, Daddy, look at me! And I'm doing what any other parent in this room would do. I'm looking at him, but I'm thinking, I am so fucking sick and tired of looking at you. <laughs> I walked over to the pool and I looked him in the eyes and I went, oh my God, I forgot to push the button. <laughs> the look on their face was priceless. Oh my God, it's priceless. Of course, it cost me an arm and leg to clean the shit out of the pool, but you're gonna tell. It's fun, it's fun. It's fun having kids. Because now that they're older, they don't need me anymore. They don't need me. And I wish they did. I really do. I miss the days when they were young and they were small. And I, I love to go toy shopping for my kids. I used to love Christmas time and go and buy toys for my kids. But I always thought that the toys that I was buying for my kids... In the bed! I would crawl between them and say I had a nightmare. Then cuddle with my daughter-in-law. I will get even. I will get even. Promise you. It's crazy. It's crazy. It's fun. You guys are fun. That's a good crowd. God bless the 930 crowd. Oh, man. True. And now, you know, and the older I get, obviously, things are happening to my body, right? Like, I just can't explain. You know, like, I get it as you get older, you get gray hair. Okay. But everywhere? Really? How am I supposed to get my sexy on if my sexy's all gray? Grecian form, it does not work on pubes. I know I tried it, all the guy was a brown pecker and it was still too small. That stuff's messy. Runs down your lake, gets all over everything. My wife went down and he came up looking like a coal miner. Hey, we went with it, I made it wear the light and the goggles. Mine for gold, honey! I don't like that pickaxe too much, but hey, what are you gonna do? What are you gonna do? And now my hair's screwing with me because I'm losing it up here, but it's growing everywhere else. My ears, my nose, the nether regions. I'm afraid to look and see what's going on down there. I know as soon as I squat over a mirror to check it out, it's be Hasidic Jew looking back out at me. Mazel tov! <laughs> not gonna be pretty. It's not gonna be pretty. It's crazy. You guys married here? You guys are married? Yeah. <laughs> They're happily married, obviously. How long have you guys been married? Uh, not even four years, but we have five kids. <laughs> Holy shit, what? You're remarried. You were married, and then you got divorced, and you got remarried. We found each other, now we have five kids. I just 
Fucking A, man. Four years, five kids. Did you have them in your first first time you were married? Okay. <laughs> Do you guys ever argue? No. No. What's that argue about? Five, five fucking kids. That's what they're arguing about. What the fuck am I doing with five fucking kids? I got three and I'm done with them. You guys never argue. When they are no fucking fun. <laughs> How many people argue with their spouse, please? And you raise them. I can't. It's not school. I can't see shit up here. That light's awfully bright. It's got to be a clap. It's got to be auditory. Like, hey! Oh, my God. I do. I argue with my wife all the time. But you know what? Here's the thing. All right? And guys, back me up here. You women do not fight fair. Because you women can argue without saying a fucking word. Nothing. Here's a scenario. I walk into the kitchen. My wife's sipping a cup of coffee. And I go, good morning. And she gives me one of these. <laughs> what that means that's a poof and a shrug how's that fair Pfft. i just know that whatever follows is not going to be good but i have to ask oh you're mad at me hmm. again no word and here's where the real the real magic happens right because you ladies are like argument jedis with a wave of your hand you can get me to make your point for you i go what you're mad because I, I stayed out late and didn't call Oh, so I'm the asshole. I'm the inconsiderate asshole. You see what I'm talking about? It's witchcraft. You waved your hand. You just got me to call myself an asshole. Twice. Twice. And it's not right. It's not fair. So I got I to gotta go on the offensive, right? Because I just called myself an asshole. So I have to go after you. I have to say the thing that I think is going to piss you off even more. You're just like your mother. No kidding. You're just like, I, I, I've done it before. I want to get those words back, but it's too late. You're just like, it's too late. It's done. And she gives me the look. <laughs> Off she goes, storms down the room. Right? So I'm in their kitchen going, good, good. I don't need just not my fault. I didn't do anything wrong. I'm a grown-ass man. I can stay out as late as I want. I'm not, it's not my fault. I'm not wrong here. It's not my fault. It's fucking my fault. It's my fault. Fuck, it's my fault. Shit. Shit. So I go down the hall and say the three words that I know is going to melt her heart. I knock on the door, I open the door, I go, honey, I'm an asshole. <laughs> and that's how you ladies win a fight without saying a word. It's true. It's unbelievable. Unbelievable. Thanks. Thank you. Just fucking wrote that 10 minutes ago. That worked, huh? It's not bad. That's ah, fun. It's fun. My wife and I have a crazy relationship. When we first got together, she's a product of the Catholic school education, so she's really kind of naive in a lot of things. At least she was when she was younger. And we were, we were first dating. We were doing some heavy petting, and I had to do a lot of coaching with her. And um, I whispered as sexually as you could whisper something like this into somebody's ear. I said, how about a blowjob? She said, I don't know how to do it. I said, just use your mouth and your hands. She turned into Crow Magnum woman. <laughs> there was smoke coming off my pubes. My dog was in the corner. That's not right. There's supposed to be peanut butter on that. Listen, I was seeing a long time. I love that fucking dog. <laughs> comedy people it's comedy <laughs> I had to stop her go no 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 you gotta pull on that she treated it like it was a lawnmower <laughs> six months later when the skin grafts healed we did get it right we've been married for 21 years and when oh thank you I deserve that thank you trust me when you've been married that long Sometimes you need some help in the bedroom. Sometimes you need some help with the, mm, the act. And so she tells me that she's going to go to one of those, um, those sex toy demonstrations. Any of you ladies ever gone to that? Rose, have you been to one? <laughs> Rose is not. Oh, Rose, you have your drink now? Everybody cheer Rose for her birthday. <laughs> cheers. I don't have my drink, but cheers. I left it back there somewhere. Cheers. So you've never been, but you guys have. Yeah. yeah? Listen, I'm a guy. I think it's great because I'm a guy. This is what I'm thinking. I'm thinking you ladies are getting together, right? You're drinking some wine. You're trying these things out on each other. I know, but I'm a guy. That's what I think. Because in reality, what are you doing? You're getting together, drinking wine, talking about Fifty Shades of Grey and how shitty your husbands are. That's what you're doing. Right? That's what you're doing. 
But my wife says to me, listen, I'll come back with something for you. I go, what could you come back with for me at a sex story dinner? She goes, don't worry about it. Listen, I'm game. I'll try anything. So I said, all right, come back with something for me. She comes back with massage oil. I go, oh, that's great, you're gonna massage me? She goes, no, 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 you're gonna massage me. I go, how is that for me? She goes, it'll put you back in touch with my body. All right, so the kids are out of the house. I put the massage oil on and I promptly massage her and she falls right to sleep. It's like, honey, honey, wake up, wake up. She goes, not now, I'm too tired. So I looked out at my hand and I looked out at my guy. I said, well, I guess this really is for me. I put on her lead press on nails, pretended with somebody else, had a great time. Great time. We had fun. That was fun. It was a fun night. We tried different things. We tried the movies, right? Pornos. Pornos are fun. But pornos always have some sort of weird plot twist or something crazy going on. And our favorite is always the lady who orders the pizza, but she doesn't have enough money to pay for the pizza. We decided to reenact that. So my, my kids are out of the house. My wife puts on a sexy outfit. I make it the Giorno pizza. It's just like delivery. I knock on the door. She answers the door in her outfit. I got the pizza. I go, ma'am, I have your pizza for you. She goes, I don't have enough money to pay for that. I go, well, there's gotta be a way you can pay for this hot, steamy, we ate the whole fucking pizza. No sex, ate the whole fucking pizza. Kids came home, we were passed out on the floor, cheese and sauce all over us, just, that's all we did. So. Trying to spice up the sex life, we try, we watch a lot of movies, we watch the things, we try the things in the movies. Sex in the movies is always so much better than it, is, than it is in real life, right? Like sex in the shower. Guys, try that? Looks great in the movies. In real life, it's like being fucking waterboarded. <laughs> Just start admitting to everything. Can't get a grip slide backwards, shampoo bottle winds up in your ass. It's horrible. Sex standing up looks great in the movies, doesn't it? Because in the movies, that sexy music is playing. I don't know what, that's the only sexy music I know. Dude, it sounds like a fucking circus, I know, but it's good enough. Right, they're making now. She jumps up, he does a move, bam, he's in, they're going at it, right? Not in real life. In real life, it's like this, I can't. I fucking, will you move your leg? I'm trying, I can't, I can't. Whoa, wait, I think I'm in, I think I'm in, I think. That's when you get that cramp, right there in your ass, right? I start going, ah, she thinks I'm into it, so she starts bouncing up and down. I can't hold her. Down she goes. She breaks it. It's just hanging. Or it's just hanging there. Look, looks up at me and goes, "Did you know there's a Hasidic Jew living back there?" It's crazy. Can't do it. Can't do it. She said to me, uh, "Why don't you go get those pills that help you with your erection?" So I went out and bought her a box of Dexatrim. <laughs> hey, it worked. Just took six months. It worked. The guys are like, I'm not laughing at that. I'm not laughing. I'm not laughing. It's a good fucking joke, but I'm not laughing. I'm not laughing because I'll get in trouble if I laugh. Oh, man. It's fun. You guys are fun, man. This is a great crowd. I love you guys. Anybody, uh, anybody vacationing here in Princeton? <laughs> Nobody's vacationing here, right? Why would you? It's the fucking basement of the riots. <laughs> Anybody go camping? Anybody here? Again, this is your camping, huh? We don't go camping. I mean, the most we rough it is the basement of the Princeton Hyatt. I hate camping. When I was a kid, my father thought camping was the greatest thing in the world. He thought camping was the greatest vacation, right? Now maybe today it's not so bad. Today maybe they have like slides you go on and there's like electricity and TV and stuff. But my father used to go out in the middle of nowhere with nothing around and everything he brought in was dehydrated, right? Dehydrated milk, dehydrated eggs, dehydrated, uh, what did I say, meat. Forgot what the fuck I was gonna say, right? But the problem is he never brought any fucking water, ever. And Bisquick, you guys know about this Bisquick? It is the duct tape of foods. You can do anything with Bisquick. I fell out of a tree, broke my arm. My father made a cast out of Bisquick. It's horrible. And he would put all that stuff in a big vat, mix it up, and he would call that dumplings. He won the, uh, the Catch a Rise of Star comedy competition here a couple weeks back. He's coming up here to do some new stuff for you. Please welcome to the stage, Eric, J Eric Jacobson.